Every year, Tom Scott, that guy that always wears a red t-shirt, tears his hair out doing a VFX heavy video and then vows to never ever do it again. The following year, he completely forgets all of this and then does it again anyway. Now, this cycle could have gone on forever, but this year, he gave me green screen footage and asked me to do pretty much everything else. It took me just under a week in Adobe After Effects and here is how I did it. The first VFX shot is actually one of my favourites because it sort of explains itself. To green screen, I did what's called a garbage mat around the general shape of Tom with the pen tool to get rid of the lights. That simplifies the green screen process. I actually did the chroma key in DaVinci Resolve, which is more powerful than After Effects at keying because if you choose 3D colour, you can select a range of colours instead of just one. Also, Resolve is free to download, which is madness. Then we get started with the first graphic, demonstrating how pixels in your screen work. And this one, although it looks simple, was actually a pain to figure out. After a lot of Googling, I found a really useful expression in After Effects called sample image, which takes coordinates and produces RGB values of those coordinates. So as the color of the sampled pixel changes, the numbers will update and the brightness of the red, green, and blue rectangles will also change to match. This RGB graphic comes back in a later sequence, but this time it's representing one bit color. So instead of 256 color values, there's just two, on or off. This is powered by an if else expression, which basically says, if the color value equals one, turn the solid to 100% opacity and make the text say on. Else, turn the solid to 0% opacity and make the text say off. Again, sample image automatically updates as the sample pixel changes. Moving on, there's the background swap sequence that I used a few times and probably the animation I'm most happy with. I knew this video would be using lots of different backgrounds and like the green screen bit at the start, I love the idea of really breaking the fourth wall and imagining Tom having an elaborate studio, like the warehouse in Monsters Inc, where he can quickly call up any background he wants. This is where you find Easter egg number one. Some of the backgrounds are from Tom's other videos. I also got to sneak my branding in there too. I started by building the studio set from wall textures placed in 3D. I did a studio sign on the far wall and did some simple lighting to finish it off. These lights also cast Tom's shadow on the backgrounds. Again, this is all native inside of After Effects, so nothing too complicated yet. Then to animate the background carousel, I used a plugin called Newton to simulate the physics as if the backgrounds were attached by string. I first set up the carousel with solid layers, so you've got the main bar at the top and rectangles for each background you see. Between them and the top bar are two columns of circles which will be used to simulate pieces of string. Think of them like points on a spine. I took all of that into Newton and added joints between the bar and each of the circles all the way down to the background rectangles. So when the bar moves, the rectangles will follow and have that nice swinging motion I was after. After setting up some basic physics parameters like the gravity strength, I played the simulation. The settings are rarely perfect on the first go, so this bit takes a lot of tweaking to get just right. Once I was happy with it, I rendered out the simulation to a new composition. I then used a script called Connect Vertex to Point to connect the vertices of a mask to those moving circles, so I could then use the stroke effect to turn them into string. Speaking of the Newton plugin, I also used it in a much smaller way to simulate this text falling down. Much simpler setup, I just separated each letter and placed tiny circles underneath them to make them fall down an angle. Here, when Tom's demonstrating how bad video looks with a limited colour palette, that's just a very simple posterise effect. So here it's set to 2, then 4, and then the effect is turned off completely. This sequence is one that a lot of people seem to have liked. I first used this digit effect a lot on my title sequence for the 2019 Christmas lectures, which is actually where I met Tom in the first place. I started by creating a grid of squares with a simple turbulent noise and mosaic effect to use as a guide. Then I made text layers to fill those squares with digits. It was really important to use a fixed width font so that each digit fit in the square exactly. In this case, I used OCR standard. I lined them up inside the grid guide by changing the tracking and netting in the character panel. 
Then I added a character offset animator with a wiggly selector to make each digit randomly flicker between one and zero. My canvas of digits was ready. Then in a separate composition, I took Tom's footage and added a mosaic effect with the exact same settings as the mosaic I used for my digit grid. I added the digit composition and put it underneath Tom and set its track mat to alpha mat. That way the digits would only show through Tom's silhouette. I duplicated Tom's footage, put it on top and enabled preserve underlying transparency to bring his colour back. The whole thing was then finished off with a few glow effects. This same technique was repeated a few times with different sized digits to show the same video using more and more bits. Now we get to another set. I created the cinema in the same way as I made the studio set, just images for the walls and floor placed in 3D. You don't actually see it in the final video, but I even made sure the floor was an authentic disgusting cinema carpet. It does turn up on Tom's background carousel though. Then I designed a row of seats in Adobe Illustrator, duplicated them a few times and placed them further and further away from the screen to build up the room. But the absolute highlight of this whole six second sequence was surely me as a janitor. I don't have a green screen myself, so I had to bodge it a bit by filming against a white background and using the roto brush to cut me out. It took a while to get perfect, but it was so worth it. I mean, Tom's got at least four studios. Of course he'd have his own cinema and on-brand janitor. Easter egg number two. A lot of people spotted this. When Tom's talking about a fancy monitor not fixing a bad YouTube video, the owner of that monitor is Googling, is my monitor a waste of money? Oh, and it's also not a real monitor. Finally, we get to the media encoder sequence. Easter egg number three. This here is apparently a reference to the film Spaceballs. I'm really sorry, I've never actually seen it. That was Tom's idea. And Easter egg number four, the highest compression setting is filmed on a potato. To make the video quality look heavily compressed was actually simple. I just rendered it over and over again at a low bitrate until it was sufficiently potato-like. I've been a fan of Tom's videos for a while now, especially his green screen videos, so this was a huge pleasure to work on. Links to all the programs, plugins and scripts I mentioned are in the description below. Thanks to Tom for handing the reins over to me and I hope you enjoyed this VFX breakdown.